I've got a couple of topics to talk about today that are more specifically uh, about government's commitment and a couple of key projects from um, Department of Primary Industry and Regional Development. That's the agency I'm currently um, working for. Um, I'm on loan from the Environmental Protection Authority for about three years to manage uh, the South Coast Agriculture Development Zone. So what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about what's happened with the Albany Shellfish Hatchery, for those of you who don't know. And then I'm going to talk about the South Coast Agriculture Development Zone. It's not so much specifically about value adding, but it's more about creating a picture of government's commitment at the forefront and for production of products that will come online you know, at some point in the future. In the media this week, there was a, a good article with uh, Jonathan Bilton, who was a successful tenderer to run the hatchery. And it was, uh, there was a nice line, they called the backbone of shellfish farming in Western Australia. I thought that was good, considering shellfish obviously don't have backbones. I thought it was a nice little play on words there as well. On uh, Frenchman's Bay Road, there was an existing aquaculture park. Money was spent and invested in the mid 90s and the land is vested with the Minister for Fisheries. There was some ageing existing infrastructure on there and to say it was ageing was understating it. It actually had rust holes in it and sheets were blowing off and anyone who had ever been out to that site, it was, was quite an eyesore. It was active some time ago and then it sat disused to some degree for a period of time. There was acknowledgement there, there was a growing demand for high quality spat, which is juvenile shellfish from this uh, facility. Uh, as the government's looking ahead for, for what's required. And with that came a recognition that if government didn't step in and assist this, um, this industry, then uh, it likely wasn't going to succeed. So that's the recognition for the need for government to support and grow the local shellfish industry. And in order to do that, there were um, several studies were completed. This was Aquaculture Council WA. There was um, a report and then a business plan formulated for that. Historical use of the site on Frenchman's Bay Road. Um, it's next to the whaling station and had a little bit of a checkered history in terms of it actually was probably what you call a little bit of a dump for offal from the whaling station and things like that. So there were some historical issues associated with um, taking on that site and looking to um, redevelop it and turn it into what, what it was required to be. Some of the previous uses there were ocean foods, and they're in lot four. Uh, the land's terrace is a total of, uh, of four lots, as I said, and it goes back up to the road. Importantly, I guess, looking ahead too, we, and you'll see what we've done with the site shortly, there's room for future expansion, which is also really important, I think, too. So the commitment to refurbish and rebuild this new site um, allows for something to occur there in the future. So I've coined this slide, um, building a state-of-the-art hatchery, and it, it really has turned out to be that. And I think it's a, it's a true credit to all the people that were involved in it and the agency for delivering it. That commitment doesn't come cheap. It was spent, over $2 million was spent on the rebuild of the hatchery. And um, there's also a guarantee of funding to run that for $450,000 a year for the next four years. So you can see a couple of the processes there. That's uh, up in the top left. That's the ocean intake for um, bringing clean water into the hatchery. And there's a complex biosecurity system there. Um, and that's what the build actually looks like there on the bottom right. Uh, stages of demolition. And then there's a state of the art water treatment system there as well. Importantly, um, when you're thinking about this in the context of um, building local opportunities, there's um, creation of jobs with the redevelopment of this hatchery. And um, the product that's going to come out of it, it's not just going to be boosting uh, local shellfish production. It's going to go statewide as well. So there's, there's other projects um, that the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development, which, in which is embedded the old fisheries department, is looking at several large projects. There's a big one in Shark Bay. Um, that's the Harvest Road project. Um, the backer behind that is Andrew Forrest. There's another one called um, the, you know, it's situated in the Flying Foam Passage in Pilbara. That's another reasonable size. One, and then there's the South Coast Aquaculture Project, which I'm going to talk to you about shortly. Back in December, there was an official launch of the hatchery facility. Um, Premier Mark Gowan and Mr Fisheries came down to do the official cranking of the tap handle there to turn it on. So like all these things, you need a good medium moment. So that was the one for December for the official launch of the hatchery. So the hatchery has been completed to the highest standard, incorporating best practice design ahead of time and on budget. Uh, it's got multi-species capability, as in oysters and mussels at this stage, and priority will be given to um, WA industry over Eastern States contracts as and when they may become available. And what that means is as we start to grow the bivalve mollusk 
um, industry here in Western Australia. If there's any opportunity for the hatchery operator to be taking on large contracts for over east to send um, spat over there for uh, any spat shortages, uh, at that point in time, it has to give consideration given to WA um, requirements in the first instance, which I think is a really good uh, regulatory mechanism in there. Down on the bottom left, that's Jonathan Bilton. For any of you who have met him, he's uh, to run the hatchery for the next four years, and his partner, Anthony Ayres, who I've met. And uh, I, th I love the, the pick in the middle. It looks like a mad professor, because when you're out there in the hatchery with Jonathan, he's in the algae room there, and uh, I think that, that pick sums him up quite nicely. He's just in his element. He doesn't really want to administrate. He doesn't want to be dealing with contracts and building this, building that. He just wants to get into his hatchery, and he wants to grow fish. He wants to do the aquaculture side which is really interesting. And on the right there, that's some spat there. That's actually, um, that's a fairly recent photo. That's uh, come out only a couple of weeks ago. So it's actually got product growing in there now. Just before I move off the hatchery too, I'd just like to acknowledge um, uh, the, the local DPIRD uh, regional manager, Russell Adams too, because when I said the hatchery was completed to the highest standard ahead of time and on budget, I think it was, primarily due to Russell Adams' efforts in um, knowing how and where to source good local knowledge, suppliers, and, uh, and, and get the thing happening up and running. So he did a fantastic job. Okay, this is a bit, this is my project. So this is um, the South Coast Aquaculture Development Zone. And earlier on we heard about branding and, and names, and I asked a question um, earlier of uh, where do you get a name like, um, vino food and, and that sort of thing. We, um, in government, we tend to live in acronyms and the South Coast Aquaculture Development Zone gets a lovely one called SCADS. It sounds like you've sort of got some sort of transferable disease or something. So I think we may have to work on that, but that's generally how it works. We're kind of stuck with that. We've had one in the Kimberley and that's the CADS, not very imaginative, and one in the Midwest. Well, that was the MWADS, so that was even harder to say. So at this point in time, we're still stuck with the SCADS until we come up with something better. So just quickly, just touch on what an aquaculture development zone is. It's a zone of water, as the name suggests, but it's um, declared by the minister and gazetted as an area of de-risked and pre-approved water that proponents then can come into and they have a streamlined approval pathway in, in which they can then undertake the aquaculture. So that's basically my job now is to, um, is to look at this project and the scope was from Augusta to Israelite Bay. So they sent a pretty uh, hard task when they initially set up the business case for the project. That's a whole lot of water to look at. We fairly quickly narrowed it down and I'll show you some of the, some of the ways we've done that shortly, but it's taken a little bit of effort to sort of come back. They're an important mechanism because uh, to get attract new players to aquaculture, it's when you have de-risked it and you've got a full suite of environmental approvals, it makes it a lot more attractive for someone to come in and uh, take up a project. So that's kind of the, the critical path there. And what approvals are required? You've got social, which is social licence and, and all the issues that go along with that. Health, um, Department of Health regulate shellfish in Western Australia. And importantly, environmental. As the Department of Health, they regulate the environmental requirements of the project. Um, in purple there are some of the areas you can see what we've spent the last probably two weeks. I spent two weeks down here with consultant and we were ground truthing a lot of the investigative works that had been done. The purple areas are sort of denoting we had four um, target areas. That was in the Albany District, Bremer Bay, Hope Town and Esperance. So we've taken it from the Augusta to Israelite Bay scope and managed to pull it down using a lot of GIS analysis and, and SAT work um, to see were there any shallow intertidal sites and was there any sites um, suitable from a shelter point of view. And uh, you guys out there probably know a lot better than me that the South Coast doesn't have a lot of sheltered sites on it, so it took a lot of it out of play quite quickly. Again, building on the data for the um, WA Shellfish Quality Assurance Program, um, we had to look at um, known sources of um, pollution and uh, contamination. So you look at existing drains um, where farms have direct runoff to an area that we may have been looking at. So not only do we look at it in an area from a, a sheltered point of view, um, some shallow intertidal work as well, then we've got it, well we might find something and think, oh great, we've finally got an area, then we find out there's some known contaminants, it might be 
historical um, usage adjacent to the site, so there still might be some heavy metals flying off in there and that sort of thing. So again, it's another layer of consideration that has to be taken into. Um, so you can see there we've got uh, big areas where there's actually no data, so there are areas where we had to go and physically um, ground truth and have a good look at as well. Um, low and medium and high shown in there. So that was again, that was a risk uh, analysis that we need to undertake. It takes about 12 to 18 months worth of work to get the body of work to submit to the Department of Health to get a classification for a shellfish growing area. So it's not very straightforward. They're characterising some potential areas of suitability and this is sort of, we're starting to get to a little bit more of the, the pointy end there, I suppose, in our final site selection process. Um, and you can see again, we've got a, a potential suitability there of high, moderate, low and very low. Some of the sites that look good on satellite and some of the other analysis that we'd run, we finally got down there and they weren't looking as suitable. You know, it just wasn't, uh, it just wasn't going to be viable. So we're sort of at that point now where we're still narrowing it down. And in fact, I've got a draft report this week on that site report that we've done. One of the things we're taking into consideration too is when we're selecting sites is um, is the area of impact of social license, as I said before, and we've already started to work with um, the likes of Justin Bellinger and his crew from South Coast NRM. So we're getting some good local content to build into the project as well. What does all this mean for West Australian premium seafood production? I guess, as I said at the start, it's, uh, this is not about a value add, it's sort of about an update from a government agency perspective about the money that's been put into a couple of key projects. The hatchery is going to supply the juvenile spat. Finally selecting some sites and then gaining approval for the South Coast Agriculture Development Zone will be great because that will give a good grow out site as well. And then as we go forward from there, there'll be a, a large expansion in the shellfish available to market, which is where the other expertise comes in as how to um, market that and, um, and, and create some value add opportunities. And just finally, I'll just finish up, I think the future looks bright for local shellfish production on the south coast and um, that's with ongoing support from Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development and dealing with local people as well. Thank you for your time today.